So I'd like to thank um, everyone for uh, joining our, our mini symposium on uh, data-driven approaches for analysis and prediction of uh, climate dynamics. This is uh, part one of two. Um, uh, I'd like to start uh, by thanking uh, also on behalf of my co-organizers, uh, John Harlem and uh, Joanna Slawinska, uh, the organizers of the conference, uh, Georg Gottwald and uh, Jessica Matthews, for making this happen uh, despite uh, the challenging uh, circumstances. Also, um, our speakers for their uh, contributions, uh, and of course, um, uh, the audience for, for uh, taking time to attend uh, from, you know, potentially challenging uh, time zones. Um, so uh, in this first part of the, of the mini symposium, we have two talks uh, by Xi Xiao Jiang and uh, Dina Isli. Both of these have been uh, pre-recorded talks uh, available on, uh, on YouTube. Xi uh, Xiao is going to give it um, live now. Dina is going to give a summary uh, of her presentation and there will be uh, more time for uh, Q&A. Um, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll take a break uh, and resume uh, at uh, 4.30 uh, p.m. Eastern for the second part of the mini symposium. Now, uh, between, uh, between that time, there's another uh, mini symposium uh, that, sorry, we're, we're resuming at 8, 7 p.m. Sorry, uh, oh. 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. Uh, yeah, in between there is a mini symposium at 4.30 MS-12 on transfer operators and geophysical flows that may be uh, of interest. So uh, I thought that um, I'd mention that. Um, I would also like to uh, ask uh, everyone, if possible, to uh, uh, stay on mute while, while uh, our speakers are giving their talks to ensure uh, uh, uninterrupted uh, you know, audio quality. Um, and then at the end, uh, if you would like to uh, ask a question, um, you, you could uh, use the either the chat or uh, there is a uh, there should be uh, an option to raise hand um, uh, which if you click on a button participant that should be in the bottom of your, of your screen uh, then there you, you should have I believe an option to raise hand uh, and uh, if not you can just pick up I think that is also fine um, and I would also like to ask our our speakers to please uh, ensure that they stay within the, the time limit um, uh, of uh, uh, half an hour slot. Uh, okay, so, uh, so without further um, ado, um, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce Xi Xiao, who will be speaking to us about machine learning for uh, missing dynamics. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to give a talk uh, uh, in this SIAM MPE conference. So uh, my today's topic is uh, uh, machine learning for missing dynamics. So uh, this is the plan of my talk. First, I will introduce the framework of uh, our modeling of missing dynamics. And second, uh, um, when we uh, just uh, give the, uh, for the, for modeling missing dynamics, we need to use two machine learning tools. One is called uh, reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces representation, RK, uh, or RKHS representation. Another is called the uh, long short term memory network, LSTM network. And then I will show you three numerical examples. Uh, finally, I will show you the strong convergence theory for the trajectory. Uh, so here is uh, uh, the problem. So a, as we know, uh, model errors always uh, um, arise from uh, some incomplete understanding of the physics in a lot of uh, uh, dynamical systems. Uh, even we know the underlying physics, I say we can uh, write down the dy dynamical equations based on the Newton's law or navier stokes equations, Maxwellian equations. But uh, sometimes these systems are computationally expensive um, maybe due to uh, just uh, high dimensionality. And for some of the problems, we even don't know what is the underlying physics, but uh, we, uh, what, what we, uh, we can get is some observation data, maybe from these problems. So uh, for that, that, that kind of problem, data-driven modeling may be possible. So uh, historically, there are a lot of uh, methods for modeling of dynamics there. 
they may be just uh, called a model error or some uh, great uh, scale parameterization or closure modeling or reduced order modeling. And the methodology maybe include, uh, uh, includes the Maurice Swansea formalism, averaging, homogenization, stochastic parameterization. So, okay, um, here our, our, our goal is to deduce a computationally efficient model just to predict the evolution of the, uh, the resolved variables in the, uh, when the full dynamic system is missing or sometimes it's just too expensive for computation. So this is our uh, task. So, okay, let's first uh, give uh, an easy example. A, a, here are two variables. One is XT resolved variable. Another is YT, uh, the green YT unresolved variable. So a, for resolved uh, XT, so a, the, this is a, uh, partial F, partial dynamics F is given, given. But uh, for the unresolved variable, this uh, G is uh, missing, is unknown. So we also just here are some uh, appropriate assumptions for these uh, functions F and uh, uh, G and all. Uh, this is the setup of our problem. Since uh, the dynamics for unresolved variable Y is missing, so we also we need some more conditions. Let's say we are given a, a historical historical time series X T and Y T. Here Y T is uh, we call it uh, identifiable unresolved variable, and uh, this uh, uh, this YT we will uh, just uh, give an introdu introduction for this YT later. YT, uh, we will, I will tell you YT is called identifiable unresolved variable. So uh, our goal is still to uh, uh, hope to uh, given the partial dynamics, this uh, XT plus one equals F, and also given this historical time series XT one T, we have to predict the resolved variable XT and its statistics, and the, such as the mean var covariance, um, based on some new initial condition, some new initial. So uh, this is the framework of our closure model. So uh, uh, basically, uh, for XT, the it is still like is like given the same since F is known, but for YT, we need to um, learn this uh, function or here is conditional mean, the E epsilon, this one, based on the this historical time series, X, T, and one, this, this one, historical date time series. So uh, this is the, uh, the framework of our closure model. So here is an, an, an example. So uh, cons we consider a uh, Langevin dynamics uh, double well potential. So VX, like I said, this one is double well potential. Uh, we discretize it uh, using the Aura Maruyama scheme and uh, the time steps is uh, delta equals 0.01. So uh, we can only observe the time series of, we only observe the time series of XT, XT. So we first get a time, uh, historical data, time series of XT, let's say. Then based on the, this uh, first, uh, the known given, dynamics uh, for uh, the first equation for xt, we can get the uh, the time series of yt using this uh, uh, final difference method just uh, based on the first equation of this Langevin dynamics. So that's why we call it uh, identifiable unresolved uh, variable, variable here. So uh, right now, uh, uh, the, this is still framework of closure model. So uh, in order to learn this uh, conditional expectation, this epsilon, uh, we, this one, this uh, function will be uh, trained using uh, machine learning tools, uh, two machine learning tools. One method is called the uh, RKHS representation. Another is called the uh, LSTM network. So uh, uh, first, for the, fir our, for the first our method, the RKHS represent we first, uh, give a quick introduction, what is RKHS representation. First, uh, any function f in this uh, RKHS space, so it can um, it ha satisfy the reproducing property. That means uh, there is this uh, kernel k, such that uh, the inner product between the kernel k and uh, the function f 
uh, is itself f. And what we need is the kernel called, we need to use is the kernel unbending of a conditional distribution. So uh, that means uh, we'd like to represent um, kind of this, just uh, we'd like to represent this conditional uh, distribution P of Y given Z uh, as a, 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 a kind of a generalized Fourier series. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, Psi K uh, is a set of uh, complete uh, basis in the weighted uh, uh, L2 space with uh, the weight Q. And C K of C is another uh, set of complete uh, basis function in L2 space. So uh, then these two are basis functions and uh, this green this green term can be understand, understood as uh, just uh, the uh, Fourier coefficients, Fourier coefficients. So kind of, uh, or just, uh, um, and these Fourier coefficients can be uh, computed by the Monte, uh, Monte Carlo approximations. We, uh, this the detailed derivation for this uh, kernel and many of condition distribution can be found in uh, Tyrus Berry and uh, John Harlem's uh, 2018 this paper. So uh, this is uh, RKHS basically just we uh, given basis and then train these uh, free coefficients. Free coefficients. Then once uh, uh, after training, we get uh, is this uh, uh, this free coefficients, this green term. Then once there are some new observing data comes in, like say new y or new z comes in, then we can follow this uh, conditional distribution at this new y and new z. So here here is our numerical results, we see that uh, um, for short-term prediction, uh, if we use uh, only 50,000 data for training, then uh, the trajectory can be captured up to time about maybe 20. Yeah. But if more, we use more data for training, let's say we use uh, 500,000 data for training, and the trajectory here can be captured up to time about 150. And also, uh, here is the long-term statistics like the probability density functions and also auto covariance auto covariance can be well captured if uh, a lot of less data are used for training let's say here 500,000 data are used for training uh, similarly here just uh, uh, since this is a double well potential problem so uh, we can also um, compute the mean exit time and the reaction rate also some uh, very two popular just uh, statistics, statistical quantities for uh, double well potential problem. So we also we see that uh, uh, if we use a lot of data for training, then uh, the this uh, uh, mean asset time and the reaction rate can be well captured. And here is the theorem. So uh, we can show that uh, um, uh, the uh, the, the, the short uh, for the short uh, our closure for our closure model, then uh, the trajectory can be captured up to a uh, finite time. Uh, this is the order of this uh, time. So okay, uh, this is just the, the uh, we only consider two variables, uh, one resolved xt and another unresolved yt. But uh, we need to notice that for most of the problem. So a unre basically unresolved variable uh, lies in a high dimensional space, high dimensional space. So a, uh, it is almost impossible to uh, recover this missing, this function G for high dimensional Y. But uh, also we need to note, we actually we do not care um, this, uh, the dynamics for Y very well. We just care about dynamics of X since X is the maybe uh, the, the resolve that we care about x. So, a, so how to do uh, for high dimensional y? Here uh, we um, define uh, an uh, uh, identifiable unresolved variable theta t like this. So, a, the, for the partial dynamics f, it can be decomposed into two parts. Uh, let's say here. Uh, F, uh, the first part is uh, F bar. F bar only contains uh, the, evolves the resolved variable xt. And uh, um, 
the remaining terms get theta uh, involves both x t and y t, then this theta t is uh, called uh, identifiable unresolved variable. So here is some uh, two examples here. The first is, is a Lorentz 19, uh, 96 model. So, a, so a here, um, x is the uh, resolved variable, and uh, each x k can uh, is connected to several uh, j's uh, y j k. So, y j k is uh, unresolved variable. So, a, this the whole summation, this summation of the y j k is denoted by this theta k identify unresolved variable. Also, here is uh, um, another example for the um, chromology uh, physics model. So, a uh, I will just uh, talk about it later. Uh, okay, so a, all, we still, uh, our goal is to predict uh, the trajectory of uh, x, uh, t, and uh, statistics. So a, um, here, uh, this is the, uh, we can, uh, once we get the time series for x, t, the historical time series for x, t, and theta, t, then we can, Construct this general closure model, a uh, based on this uh, our framework, very similar to the framework. We only need to train this uh, conditional expectation e epsilon, uh, using uh, based on machine learning tool or uh, RPHS or LSTM network. So uh, the issue here actually, uh, we just need to choose what is. Uh, the, these memory terms to use, such as what is this uh, ZTM. ZTM evolves the basic, uh, in all form, uh, contains both the resolved X, T, and uh, identifiable unresolved theta T. And, and it's there, and there are terms, uh, previous memory terms. So, uh, and these memory terms are chosen empirically, basically. So, uh, uh, here, uh, there are two situations here we consider. The first one is a uh, uh, short memory regime. That means uh, if uh, this uh, CTM, CTM, the, this, uh, the memory terms is, uh, is lies in low dimensional space, then there are only very few uh, CTM. Yeah, then we will consider using RKHS representation for this closure model. If uh, in another case, is the long memory regime. If CTM, uh, that means a lot of memory terms, a lot of uh, their XT and uh, theta T and their historical data set will be if we use the ball here, this uh, memory terms, then we'll use LSTM uh, to train this uh, epsilon. So here is the first uh, uh, example, uh, two layer Lorentz 96 model. So X is the uh, resolved variable. Each x k is connected con, uh, connected to a lot of uh, unresolved y j k, and uh, as we said before, for this uh, uh, the this uh, we use this theta k to as the uh, is the summation of this y j k. So take this theta k as the identifiable unresolved variable. So uh, um, we only need to. Uh, Thing, this is uh, uh, epsilon using the uh, from uh, some empirical just our test we found that uh, actually for this model we don't need we only need to use very few uh, memory terms for this ATK uh, K here so uh, we so we choose to use architecture's representation to train this uh, uh, epsilon condition expectation. So I also uh, we choose several. Uh, we first uh, model is we only choose one memory term uh, that is x k. And the second model we choose x t k and then theta t minus one k. And now for comparison, we also use another um, um, closure model that is a parametric technique of Wilkes. He just uh, 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 regress the theta k as a polynomial of this x k. Here, um, so here first uh, we uh, just numerical results. So if the sigma, sigma is the a parameter characterizing the time scale of uh, this uh, model, that means if sigma is very small, 
Then there is a time scale separation between resolved SK and uh, unresolved YJK. So uh, basically, this kind of problem could maybe call the fast flow dynamics. Or yeah, so uh, uh, historic, there are a lot of maybe averaging theory can be also used to uh, solve this kind of problem. But here we still use our uh, RKHS model to uh, for our closure model here. So uh, we see that it uh, uh, seems that the uh, it, it, here you can see that uh, the statistics, long term statistics, like the, including the PDF and the auto -co auto correlation function ACF, and also RMSE can be well um, both can be uh, this long term statistics can be well captured. Also RMSE is good. That RMSE is a quantity. Um, Characterize uh, uh, the short term prediction. If uh, it is more close to this trajectory, is more close to zero, then it is, it is better. So we can see here that this actually our RKHS model performs uh, better than the Wilkes parametric uh, that uh, uh, model. Also, another is we we if we increase. Uh, let the sigma the parameter becomes larger. Then in this case, no time scale separation. Also, we can see um, in this case we see that only RKHS using two memory terms, two memory terms that is this black uh, dashed line can uh, is uh, in good agreement with the, this yellow curve. That means it can well capture the full model dynamics of the full model. So we. Uh, here also the for short term trajectory is also um, the RMSE. Also, we can see that uh, um, RKHS using two memory terms, this model uh, performs the best. So the reason why uh, that mean uh, actually here, if we scatter plot uh, the uh, the phase of X, XK versus the theta k, we see that uh, um, almost uh, the, the the RKHS uh, using two Memory terms. This model, this black, can is uh, almost uh, uh, overlap the full model, the original L96 full model. But uh, the other two uh, closure models, uh, you see, uh, deviate uh, uh, greatly from the full model for this uh, scatter plot. Okay. Here are several uh, just uh, remarks uh, on RKHS uh, representation. Um, first, uh, uh, our actually this RKHS representation is a non parametric uh, uh, formulation. Um, but if we choose the basis function, basis functions carefully, let's say we choose the called the properly orthogonal decomposition basis or POD basis here. Basically, this basis is uh, just an a, a orthogonal matrix of the SPD decomposition of the this memory terms, this Z. So we, then we can uh, just uh, simplify this uh, conditional expectation, this epsilon. And finally, we found out some uh, simplification. We found actually it is a linear regression just uh, between the theta and the C. So we, that means uh, actually uh, our non parametric uh, formu uh, formulation can be written in the form of uh, a parametric representation when the POD basis are used. The POD basis are used here. And that means we can understand this works uh, parametrization uh, as a, just a very specific case of our RKHS um, representation. If we choose the this memory term Z, this memory Z T uh, uh, is spanned by uh, the uh, function of one, a uh, six dimensional function that is spanned by one. SK, SK square, SK uh, to the SK fifth. So we also <coughs> we can see uh, historic. Also, there are other many Namax model or other uh, yeah Namax model can be used for model closure. Um, but uh, here is a, an issue. So for our cases representation, if the say the memory terms say T lies in a high dimensional space, basically it is almost impossible for us. To construct the high dimensional basis, uh, the basis function on the high dimensional Z. So, so, so actually, this RKHS method uh, suffers from the 
curse of dimensionality. So we, so we, to to overcome this uh, curse of dimensionality, this issue, we uh, also consider using uh, the uh, a machine learning tool that is called the uh, long short term memory network (LSTM) network. So we. In this uh, network, each cell, the input is uh, just uh, uh, his uh, previous uh, uh, time, uh, historical data set for x t m minus m, theta t minus m. And each cell contains a historical data set. And the final, we'd like to train find the final, uh, train the weight, train the weight w. Such that uh, the final output, uh, the theta uh, t plus uh, h m plus one predict uh, predicts the theta t plus one very well. H is uh, an estimate for the this resolved uh, observation data for the identifiable unresolved beta theta t plus one. And uh, after our this uh, loss function and after our training, um, just we will get an optimal weight this w star. Here are some uh, references for this uh, the framework of uh, this uh, LSTM. So uh, here is an example. We uh, choose the uh, core model synthetic equation, so a case model. Um, basically, we first write uh, the this one-dimensional PDE in Fourier series uh, in, in Fourier components. VK VK here is the Fourier uh, representation of the just vx of of vxt, v, each each one is here for, uh, for a coefficient here. So a, uh, this the model um, has some feature. So a, for low k modes, for low k modes, uh, those modes are linearly unstable, and for high k modes, they are linearly stable. But uh, as a whole, uh, they, the energy will be can be transferred from the Linearly unstable low k modes to uh, stable high k modes. So a KS equation is finally actually is well posed and the solution remains globally bounded in time. So we we only uh, we are only interested in the six leading modes of this KS uh, equation. That means uh, we will write uh, our closure model in uh, we, 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 uh, the identifiable unresolved variable here, theta k, involves uh, uh, all the just uh, high k modes and uh, maybe some. And, and here is uh, just our um, the, uh, the closure mod, uh, the, the framework of our closure model. Uh, so for memory terms, here we choose uh, m to be m is the length of the memory terms, length of memory terms. We choose twenty, and uh, each v k and uh, theta k here is uh, each v v here is a uh, six-dimensional components since it comp involves six uh, uh, v one to v k theta also v one to v k, and each v and theta is a, a complex number. So for Totally, this uh, uh, the memory terms is uh, uh, 480 dimensional space is in, so it is really high dimensional space. So we choose that, that's why we choose to use LSTM to overcome this curse of dimensionality. Xiao, just to let you know that you have five more minutes in your slot, so if you want to keep time for discussion, just letting you know. Okay, yeah, here is just a numerical results. You, uh, uh, I can. Stop very quickly. Just uh, uh, we can see that the long time uh, statistics can be well captured. Also, the short time trajectory can be captured up to uh, time equals 50. About so only using six the, the six leading modes uh, to capture the total uh, 96 modes. So I also um, yeah maybe this part I can skip. So I here is summary. So I in this work. Uh, in this uh, talk, I just uh, we just uh, uh, propose a framework of uh, model of missing dynamics. Basically, our uh, the innovation idea here we uh, give uh, a concept of identifiable unresolved variable, 
and uh, in our paper, actually, we show that uh, uh, when we uh, choose the memory terms, if we use identifiable unresolved variable, uh, then the result will be better than the result without using the memory terms. That means that if we, we use both x and theta, the result will be better. If we use only x, then the result uh, uh, becomes a little worse. Just so uh, another uh, second part, second conclusion, conclusion here is uh, um, basically we found that uh, RKHS representation uh, is better for short, short memory, um, uh, just a free, or framework, and LSTM is uh, works for the long memory uh, regime. And the third uh, conclusion here is uh, depending on the choice of basis functions, our uh, Let's say we, if we choose POD basis functions, our closure model, RKHS closure model, can be um, this non parametric formulation can be written in the form of uh, parametric representation. Just so we uh, can just give a bridge between our RKHS framework and a lot of other just parametric representation of the closure model. Uh, I think this is all about uh, my talk. Mm, thank you. And they... Oh, sorry. Thank you very much. I was on mute. Um, uh, this is the part where we would all clap. Um, there's a button, I believe. Uh, uh -huh. but, so, um, are there any questions? To... Do you think I in the Do you think the LSTM can help with more modern natural processes that are fractal in order to let uh, low resolution models approximate in order to let a low, low approximate sub-cell um, dynamics. Um, I believe so. I, 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 although I have no experience for uh, just a multi, maybe multi-scale problem since the uh, um, but uh, I believe the LSTM, basically once the, you, uh, you have some, uh, some the, well, the, the, the well historical data set for training, uh, maybe even for sub cell dynamics, uh, if you have some observation data for sub cell dynamics, then this LSTM is a good choice um, to train this uh, uh, sub cell uh, dynamics. And then you can maybe, um, uh, uh, inco incorporate it into the, this uh, multi-scale modeling. But uh, I myself right now have no uh, such experience uh, for, for, for such kind of problem. So, yeah, maybe in the future, I will uh, consider uh, such kind of interesting problem. Yeah, very interesting. Uh. Any uh, further questions? Yeah, I want to try one. <clears throat> And this is, I'm not sure about what you, what you mean by missing dynamics. Like, oh. we don't have governing equation? Yeah, there are several uh, possible, uh, let's say, uh, uh, this is the first our example. So you see, if only two variables, this, this example, x and y, uh, that means the missing dynamics mi missing means that the function, the Dynamics for G is unknown. G is unknown here. Okay, this is one we call it missing dynamics. <coughs> uh, another way, what is dyna missing dynamics means, uh, uh, like this one, this uh, uh, KS equation. Although you know the what is the PDE for each Fourier mode, you can write down the equation for each Fourier mode. Uh, but uh, actually, for some of the problem, we don't need to know uh, the dynamics for all the Fourier modes, like especially for some high uh, those wave numbers. So uh, we can reduce the order of the model to only low uh, those low wave numbers, uh, uh, dynamics for low wave numbers. So uh, that's what we call it also another kind of missing dynamics. There are 
two uh, ways to understand our okay. ethnic dynamics. Your talk is beautiful, but I'm still confused. The machine learning can discover equation? Uh, like okay. relations between the variables? Yeah, uh, actually, we use, uh, like say, if only we, uh, for, we have two variable x and y, we use machine learning actually to recover this uh, function g, actually. No, no, sorry, uh, sorry. That, that, that's, that's just very simple. But, uh, but okay. uh, uh, yes, for that one, for that particular. Yeah, for, 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 okay, yeah. But the answer to his question is yes, actually. Uh, uh, well, I don't need to know governing equation. Mm -hmm. I can use this technique yes. or the techniques that are under the umbrella of machine learning to discover relations between variables and how they behave in time. Yes. That's beautiful. So can I uh, say something? Who is answering me? Yes. Right. Can I say something? Can I just make a very it, short comment it, on it's this? It's a short comment because we're a bit over time. Yes. So basically, what we did is just that we rewrite this problem of missing dynamics as a problem of supervised learning. We just rewrite it as a problem of supervised learning. And then you can use any machine learning tools that you wish, including LSTM. It doesn't have to be LSTM. It can be anything you like to basically uh, empirically estimate this or uh, solve this supervised learning task. That's pretty much what we're doing. Can I say one comment? Yes. Please, last comment. And the dynamical system, and I think in your video, original video, the pre-recorded, you had the butterfly chaos effect of Lorentz, right? No? I, th I think you are uh, maybe referring to the next talk. Actually. Yeah. So, oh, okay. It, so it's okay we, because you mentioned dynamical systems and the talks may be related this way. Yes. The, so the question is what, I understand that machine learning has a lot of power to help us. Now what power the dynamical system has to help us? So I would suggest that uh, just to hold that thought, um, just let let us proceed to the next talk. Absolutely, uh, thank you. Uh, no, no. Uh, if if you, but if you would like, after the end of the next talk, I will leave the meeting open. There is at least half an hour break between the sessions, so um, I'm sure Shixia would be happy to to answer that. Question. Yeah, I love to learn more. Okay. okay.